Hello, welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss metaphysical and occult knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible results in your life. This week, we're going to continue our outdoor series. We're going to discuss your equipment and making sure you know your equipment before you get out into the woods. All right. Now, let's get into this. And full disclosure, people, this has actually been recorded after the section coming up where I actually go over and start to show you the tent and my thoughts on it. Because in my excitement of, ooh, new toy, I completely forgot to do this part. Um, and I can't reshoot it because I've already got the tent up too. So let's get to this. Now, I am a big believer in you need to know how your equipment works and how it functions, and you need to have it tested to some extent before you go out in the woods. So I just bought me a One Tigress TP tent, which I will be showing you shortly. I've never owned a tent like this. I've never had a tent like this. Um, this is kind of a new one. But even if I had, um, I would want to make sure that I take that tent and I put it up and set it up before I get out to the woods. I don't want something, whether it be my sleep system, my shelter, something that I'm relying on out there to not be looked at and tested before I go out there because the number of times I've purchased tents that the stakes were missing, didn't have the guidelines. Um, there was rips or leaks or something like that in the canvas itself or in the body of the tent. Um, or the tent was perfectly fine, but there's certain things I didn't plan for. Um, I can't count the number of times those have happened. And it has happened to me before because I made the mistake of picking up a tent on my way to go camping. I know a lot of people do that. I don't do that no more. I don't make that mistake. So whether it's your tent, um, whether it's your camping hatchet, whether it's your camping knife, um, whether it's what you're going to be using to cook on. Um, so maybe you're using a propane stove. Maybe you have a stove that goes over a campfire. Make sure you set it up and give it a look over. Um, and in the case of a camping, um, like cooking equipment, make sure whatever you're cooking in fits on it too. Cause I actually have a rocket stove that I occasionally use and I can cook on it with my cooking kit, but my actual canteen or water bottle, um, it'll fit, but it's also really tall. So I have found that if I'm going to boil water directly in that metal water bottle that I have. I got to be really careful. I can't bump it. I can't sneeze because it's it's just so narrow that the height just wants to tip. Not a big fan of that. Not a big fan at all. Um, <clears throat> luckily, I do have a shorter cooking vessel that I can utilize. Um, and the water bottle, if I have a campfire, I can stick straight in there. Um, but that's that's a subject for another time. What I want to emphasize in this video is test your gear. Check it out. And in fact, I'm testing and trying out um, even more than the tent, really. Um, with the outdoor series coming, I've busted out my old GoPro, which is currently charging, um, because I want to make sure I have a camera that's going to be okay in the rain and everything, because I can't predict it. And none of my other cameras are really waterproof. And I don't want to use my phone because I want to reserve my battery for emergency calls. Pretty simple. Um, luckily, this was a gift from a viewer and Working Dragon Mystic, when they found out we were doing outdoor videos, and thank you very much, Eris, for that. Um, but I've played with it, I've used it a few times, but it's been a while, so I'm refreshing getting um, acquainted with it again, so much so that, in fact, it came with the kit we bought, came with this little tripod. I didn't even know it was a tripod, because in the bag, it's just like this little thing. I didn't know what it was, um, be honest with you. But um, yeah, it's a little tripod, even extends. So it turns into, I guess, a, what do they call them? Selfie sticks. Anyway, um, handy little thing. It's going to allow me a bit more um, setup because I'll be honest, I've literally been filming like this. I've been holding it like that. Like I you know, feel like I'm going to break this thing. Um, but so far, i got to say I'm loving this little camera. Um, so all of our footage outside is going to be shot on that because I am actually playing with that and getting to know it. So bear with me. Um, hopefully it all comes out well. 
but always test your gear, whatever it is. And I will be trying out different gear here on this channel for you all. If I want to use it, I'm going to test it. In fact, I recently, is it here? No, it isn't. So I recently bought a hatchet that um, someone recommended to me. Now, it was a really cheap hatchet. I'm really iffy about it. But all I need a hatchet for at my campsite is to process kindling and some wood for the fire. Um, and actually in small pieces, because I'm planning on using a um, wood burning stove within the stove tent. That's why I bought a stove tent, right? Um, and actually it's a flat head. It's got a flat side of one end. It's not fully rounded. So I could even use it to tap in some stakes if I need to, though I do have a rubber mallet for that as well. Um, so we're just going to see. And honestly, if, if it works nicely, I can leave the mallet at the house, right? Or put that with the big wall tent. So we'll just have to see how that goes. All right. Now I will get more into the looking into your gear, testing your gear after we go over the tent, because I think it'll make a little more sense then. So stay tuned. Now to past Drake talking about the tent this week. We're changing gears a little bit, and it, we're going to start talking about a series I know many of you have actually been looking forward to. We're going to be touching on our outdoor series, all right? Now, in our last one, you'll remember we did discuss know the type of camping you're going to do. And again, I do find camping to be a metaphysical activity because it allows you to get out there and have some fun in nature and connect with nature and understanding those rhythms is very important for a mage, okay? Maybe not for the reasons some people think, but it's still important, okay? Now, I love my time in the woods. I really do. And many of you know I've had to resupply gear for sad reasons. But um, I started by getting a 10 by 12 wall tent um, with a stove jack. And that ideally was going to be for me and my wife to do four season style camping, maybe some fun activities or events where we could set up and it basically have all the bells and whistles in it. And I got one that someone said that was easy to set up and it could be set up by one person. Now we've set this thing up twice now, hoping the canvas would stretch. And so far it has not. And I can tell you right now, I don't want to take the time to attempt this solo. So my wife decided I needed to find me a tent that would meet my needs with just me. So what I settled on is this here settled on a tp style tent look at this it goes in here right yeah all in this little bag um this bag um i think it's like eight pounds maybe maybe five pounds um i actually have the stats for the tent so i'll get that exact in a moment um but this is what i settled on it's a tp style tent and it's very lightweight as we said you know let me go ahead and get these stats for you yes okay here it is so it's supposed to sleep two to four adults. Now, anyone who's ever done camping and ever used a tent, you know that two to four probably means packed in like sardines, okay? So at the size of this tent, though, I think you could sleep two adults comfortably. And a few people in the reviews even said they used um, cots in the tent, which teepees have that slanted wall on them. I'm actually curious about because I do have a cot for camping, um, that I use sometimes, um, though this one's a new one. I've not used this one yet. And I'm wondering if it sits too high. Um, and also, I'm 6'2". I have a big cot on there. And I just realized that sounded bad. Anyway, um, so we're going to see how this fits, okay? Um, and here it is. Yeah, the overall weight, this entire thing, this entire thing is only 5.3 pounds. So it's very, very lightweight. Easy for me to tote in on my own. Um in fact, I'll go ahead and put a couple pictures of it up here. Um, this is a stove tent, though. It actually has a stove jack, which means I could actually use this in winter to camp, okay? For me, that is great. That means I can shoot content for the channel when I'm out there by myself or whatnot um, year-round. I'm not limited by the weather anymore. I can just get out there and do it. Um, so this... TP tent is supposed to be 6.7 yeah 6 feet 7 inches tall at the center tip um, and the base of this thing is supposed to be 11 feet across that is a huge footprint um, 
but that fits right in line with the same, you know, the wall tent I got. It's a 10 by 12. This thing's basically an 11 foot circle. Um, so I at least know the footprint should fit within what I'm thinking. Um, now, one of the things I did like about this particular um, one, that um, other than the weight, because I don't like carrying a bunch of stuff when it's just me. I go pretty lightweight. It is a stove tent, major perk, but it doesn't come with the poles to do this. But if you had two extra poles, which you can cut from a tree if you need to, or you can take some hiking poles if you have hiking poles, um, it has the ability to actually set up a little rain flow. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. See that? I'll try and put a picture up. I'll make sure there's a picture up instead. Um, and that gives you a little area to sit under, a little rain flow to keep the rain off to get out of the tent and stretch. I like that. It's a little bit versatile. It gives me some options. And when I'm camping, I like options. Now, um, one thing I will say about this tent that a lot of people might not like. A lot of stove tents like this have no floor. They just don't. Um, and that's for a few reasons. A, it cuts down on weight drastically. And two, it's it, when you put your stove in there, you don't have to worry about melting your floor. They don't have to do anything extra special to the floor. The wall tent we got does have a bathtub floor. The floor is the heaviest piece of that tent, hands down. That much um, durable rubber or plastic is just going to have a ton of weight. I honestly think the floor weighs more than the metal frame. But they also had to install a zipper into it to fold that back so that you could put the stove down on the grass so you're still exposed. And don't let the floor fool you people. Um, bugs, stuff can still get in a tent pretty easy. Anyone who's camped knows that. It's not that difficult. No tent seals up perfectly. A little coffee break. All right. Now, I have not opened this yet. So um, we're going to see. And I will be, when I set this up, I'm going to be taking pictures and showing you all. And I'm seeing, it looks like it's all wrapped up in the tarp. So I'm at my desk. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see what I can do here. Has a nice little tie down here. Like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, before we go any further, I do like this. Hold on. I promise we'll get outside. Look at this. The instructions are sewn into the bag. So you cannot lose them. Um, and that's not paper. That's good waterproofing there. Um, I'm looking at it. I know a lot of people say, I don't know how to set up a TP. I'll be honest with you. I'll um, help you all and walk you through setting up a TP tent if you want. But by and large, it's not that hard. There are a few tricks to it. Um, what And um, what I like to do personally is I will stake it out on a cross, like four equal lateral cross. I'll stake one side, go straight to the other side, stake it, then cross that way. So I have four stakes and I pull those relatively tight so that when I lift it, something's there to hold the pole up. And then I begin making the adjustments and staking the rest of it down. That's always what I've done. Um, though I've never used a tent this light. So we'll see if it still works. So back to the tent that I had to throw over here. Okay, because I got excited about the instructions. Okay. Oh, okay. There's my pole. And that would be the stakes and cords. So, yeah, this whole thing here is just the canvas, which we ain't got room for. What I was wanting to get a look at is right here. Um, I don't know about you all, but I hate those like cheap stakes. And this was supposed to come with some decent ones. Um, oh. That's light. Um, hmm. Guiding cord there. Honestly, that's that's probably the best um, stake I've got with a pre-purchased tent. I almost always have to buy new stakes, and all the guidelines are in there. Um, Pre-tied, it looks like. Okay. I won't get those out just yet. And I'm going to be taking pictures of me as I said, or of the tent as I set it up to do some voiceover for this video. So you'll be seeing that. And that means this here is the center pole. Now this has a few things that I worry about. And those 
actually, I'm already thinking those things might not be an issue now. So let's see what we got here. We got bags, bags and bags and bags and bags. It's like a freaking Dr. Seuss video here. Um, whoa, there we go. All right. Okay. Now that's going to be your center pole here. So I like this. This has a um, very dense foam ball. Almost looks like a black clown's nose on here. Look at that. Um, that is to protect the top of the tent. I like that. That's what I was worried about. I have heard horror stories of people having poles punched through the tent. I'm also going to be interested to see if the top of the tent is actually reinforced also. Because if it is, that would be even better. Now the bottom... Okay, okay. It's um, it's actually kind of rounded here. So it's not just an open tube that's going to sink into the ground. That's actually going to have something there. Um, I like that. I do. i got to say. Okay. And as you can see, it breaks down really simple. It's just a spring cord. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Um, got to say, I'm liking that. Hold on. Lauren went off there. I'm shooting this early because I know if I'm going to put this, I got work today to do. And if I'm going to get out, I got to get the work done and then get out. So I will either be setting this up today or tomorrow for you all to see. Um, Which I got to say, I'm liking this. And I like this little, um, I gave you this little cord to hold it together while it was in the bag. But looking at that, I'm wondering if I couldn't actually use that as a lantern hanger or something in the tent. Um, I wonder if that's even what it's for. Let's see. It's not it's nowhere on the instructions. So we'll see if we can multi-purpose that thing. Because right now it just holds this together. Which, that's not a bad thing at all. Anyone who's ever tried to put poles to, um, in a bag, you know what I mean? All right, let's see here. Now, this ain't fully unfolded, I'll admit, but I am curious how it will fit back. So, we all know rarely do these things fit back. Here's some of your staking points there. We're going to do that. Good. I can see this is going to be a problem, at least in the chair. So we just have holes and stuff fly everywhere. <laughs> so we're just going to secure this and see about getting it. This looked like it had plenty of room in the bag when I got it, which I like. Um, I'll be honest, when I buy a tent and the bag fits it well before I open it, that's when I worry. Because that's when you may not get it back in the bag. But right now, even with the fact that it's shifted, it has billowed, and all that wonderful stuff, because I've been... Just working at the desk. I do not have the ability to fold it well. Um, and it even fell apart right there. Like I said, because it threw the pole and stuff. It goes back in well. Now, one thing I may not have said yet. Um, you may be wondering, what tent is it? This tent is made by a company called One Tigress. I have never used any of their products, um, so I did a lot of spelunking and researching and checking and looking because this tent is a backpacking tent. Anyone knows lightweight backpacking tents are going to be pricey. I got this sucker on sale for about two fifty. dollars um, Purchased it. They're not supporting me in any way. Um, though one tigers, if you want to send me some camping gear. <laughs> I won't complain. I'll test it out and give my opinion on it, my honest opinion. 
Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I paid about two fifty ish for this. Um, they do have a bigger one. They have one that's for up to six people. I think they call it like a rock fortress or an iron fortress tent. I don't think I need a tent that big. Um, I did consider it because again, the um, the cot situation, I'm kind of hoping to have a cot to sleep on because if I can't use my cot, then I'm going to have to consider um, carrying some form of sleep system to cut the convection when I'm sleeping on the ground. And that's not an issue. I can do that. But if I can use a cot that I already have, I'd rather use that. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut here and I'm going to um, finish up what I'm doing. I'm going to get outside and try and set this up. And I will try and take some screenshots uh, or photos of what I am doing as I go through setting it up. And I'll do the voice over that. And I'm also planning to leave it up. I want to leave it up overnight. It is extremely windy where I live. Now, I will be camping in the woods so that cuts down on the wind. My backyard, however, the area around it, it's actually a nice wind tunnel. So if it can stay up with no issues in that little wind tunnel that is my backyard with no issues, then I feel pretty safe saying it can handle the wind when I go camping. Um, and that's that's always a good thing. Now, I know um, teepees, the teepee shape, great in wind in general, so I'm not too worried there. But I'll, I'm going to be honest, I've never used a material this light. I've done a lot of canvases. I've done a lot of traditional tents, and even those are heavier than this. I've seen those rip. So the only tent I've owned in the past that I can say the material is one that I would just trust is usually like, um, yeah, it's those heavy canvas style materials, even up to a lightweight. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen an oil skin canvas tarp. Um, something like that. That's about as light as I would say I trust. Um, cause with any tent, it, there's been issues. So this one has me fascinated, really. I'm literally looking forward to it. And if this works out, this will be the tent I will be taking with me as we start our outdoor series, which I've already got a spot I'm looking at reserved and ready to go. Um, for that particular camp out though, we are taking the wall tent. So I will probably talk about the wall tent when we're out there and have it set up for that. If you all, um, are curious about that as well as doing a few other things showing how you can use a campfire for rituals and stuff like that all right <sighs> that was fun now um see ya um see you in a little bit as we set this up and go over my thoughts on it and then once it's set up i'll let you know what i think about it at first thoughts see you then okay everyone good morning i've already been out and i have looked at the temp and I did take a camera with me, so I'll be showing that in just a second. Um, all in all, I got to say I'm impressed. Now, I forgot to take a lot of pictures. I did get some pictures of it as I was setting it up. And that's what I actually want to go over first. So let's go ahead and get those pictures up here. Here you will see the tent final set up. Guidelines are on it and everything it is up now i have to say this tent went up quick it went up easy it was no hassle at all one thing since it being very light when i went to unfurl it it was like a parachute but that also made it easy for me to just turn it while it was in the air to um, find the door so when you are setting it up hold on to it until you get it staked down because the wind might take it but that being said I Once I found the um, front of it where I wanted it, I pushed it straight to the ground, put a stake in it, never had another issue. It really was nice. I thought the wind was going to make it a much, much bigger hassle. That did not happen. Um, and as you can see, it's a relatively decent sized um, tent in this picture. But I know scale is everything. And as you can see, you can see that nice little wind tunnel. You got that bank there coming and it was windy. Okay, and this the side we're looking at here is actually the side that the wind is hitting. Um, and in fact, this is actually the door here. That section is the part that makes the um comes out and makes the rain fly that you can camp under if you want. And pardon me, if you want to. What I did do that I don't like, and I think I mentioned this in the video later, I put a guideline on one of the um loops that's actually on the door. 
And there's one on the back that doesn't have a guideline. Um, I don't know if I'm missing a guideline or what. But looking back, I would actually go ahead and just not guideline the door. I really wouldn't. I think I'm going to go ahead and remove that guideline before I take it down today in order to move it to the back. <clears throat> um, because I just don't think the door needs it. Because without the guidelines, it's just going to be far easier to just get that sucker up in the air and um, use it that way. All right. So here in the next picture, we got the door actually open. You can see the center pole in there and you're starting to see a little bit of how much room is in there. Um, now, in the video I took this morning, I did actually take the GoPro and try to walk around in there to give you some ideal of scale. Um, but this one is actually showing it opened up and ready to go. Um, so, I mean, that you can tell that's a lot of room in there. You got to remember that floor area is about 11 foot, right? All right, well, let's get to the next picture. Again, this shows it um, from a slightly different angle. A lot of room in there, a lot of room. Now, one thing is it does have a, um, what they call a positioning cord. That's this black cord you see at the bottom. Um, this is actually from the left and right side. So it's perfectly, um, this actually helps to create that cross I was talking about when you stake it down. Um, I'll be honest, I started, finding the door before I knew this, what this cord was, should have read the instructions, go fig. Um, but if you know this cord's there, you can easily find that cord, position your left and right sides, stake it, and once you have it figured out, you can put your door the direction you want, make sure it's fully staked down, and then you stake the front and the back, put your pole in, you're ready to go. That is a very, very simple one. Um, I even, considering... I wondered what would happen if I left the door open and tied back when I fold it, but I think it's going to fold up too big if I do that, so I'm probably not going to do that. All right, and here's the next picture. Now, I did actually go ahead and take my cot and set it in the tent to see if I would actually have functional room, and I didn't just set it in there. I actually climbed into the cot and climbed out to make sure I could get in and out because you do have that center pole, and as you can see, that center pole is sitting there, and it is somewhat close. But I honestly and truly had no issues getting in and out of that cot um, in all sorts of configurations. Uh, my wife was even able to wander around in there. There's a lot of room. The cot's all on one side. The stove jack is actually on the opposite side of that, which we do show the stove jack in the video this morning. So you'll be able to see exactly that. Um, and that leaves that entire other side completely open. So you could put two adults in this easy and me and, me and the wife is looking at it and we actually think we might be able to put two adults with cots and the stove in there um that's something her and i are thinking about trying so we're gonna have to see um we're gonna wait though because i need to actually get my new stove before i can do that otherwise we're just putting two cots in there and there's no doubt we can get two cots in there because if it's just a summer camp, you could put the other cot on the other side and you still have a lot of room for a table and gear. So easy, a lot of room. I am absolutely impressed and surprised with this. All right, and this is actually, this final picture actually is showing that other side that I was talking about. It is, it's a circle. So if one cot will fit on one side, the other one will fit on the other side. And honestly, this, toward the front, toward the door is where your stove would sit. Um, I'm hoping to be able to show you all a video about the stove and how the tent works in it at some point. All right. Now, with that said, what do you say we go ahead and cut to the video and you can actually see what I saw this morning. All right. Be right back. All right, everyone. So here we are the next morning. You can see the tent is still up. The wind didn't blow it away. Again, like I said, this lighter type of fabrics I'm not used to, really not. But I'll try and talk a little bit more about that. But it is staked out. Um, when I came out first thing this morning, um, some of the guidelines had stretched because they're brand new. Honestly, I expected that, but like an idiot, um, I didn't compensate for it when I tied them off. So I had to retie some on here because it does not come with the guidelines on it. But I like that, and I'll tell you why. Because so many times I bought a tent where the guideline here will fray or will break, 
and if it's sewn straight into the tent you just can't replace it these they're just put through this little loop here i don't know if you can see that um i could easily replace these with some 550 cord or some bank line or something like that very easy um i do like these little tension um line stays a lot of people don't like these because they found them trickier to use i honestly kind of have to say i like them um yeah also we've got the gopro out here today wanted to get it up and running since we're going to be doing more filming and stuff like that outdoors so don't want to ruin the other cameras so and of course we got it open so we can bring in now the fabric was a little moist in here not gonna lie about that it was a little damp but that's to be expected because you're gonna have um dew you're gonna have condensation and dew build up no matter what <laughs> actually here's the stove jack it's actually a nice little stove jack i like that um i'm actually glad i bought this before of my stove because i think this is actually going to help me decide which stove i'm getting um so there's the door we came in and it does have the ability to zip from top or bottom if you prefer I think at night, if you have to get out and go to the restroom, that top one's going to be nice. Um, it does have two vents. Um, I do wonder about that. If that gives enough venting. That's something I'm going to have to look at. But again, like I said, we got a secondary door. Easy peasy. Honestly, you could crack that for some extra venting too. If you really wanted but I don't think it's gonna need it um, one of the reasons I waited is I wanted to see if it got warmed up this didn't get too hot in here too stuffy I was really impressed by that and as you can see I got lots of ground room all the way around the center pole and in fact in just a second here I'm standing up I am straight up in this thing so for me one person easily something i could get ready and changed and cleaned up in i still have a ton of room um but i'll talk about the space when we get inside but i did want to walk you around and let you see it um one other thing one other thing you can see every panel has a tie out point now the doors do have tie out points on them because you can open both doors and this whole section here turns into that rain fly um if i had it to do again i probably wouldn't tie that out i'll be honest with you i'd probably just leave that untied because um there's a spot back here where i was just one tie down short still good and taut didn't give me any issues at all but i definitely um probably before i take it down i'm going to remove that tie down from the door move it back here i do plan to leave my tie downs on the tent just so it's easier and quicker to put up but even with having to put the tie downs on quick and easy gotta say i'm loving it okay so there you go i did a walk through with the gopro and everything hope you enjoyed that honestly all in all i absolutely have to say from first runs i like this tent i really do now um part of this the big portion of this video was me talking about why you should check your gear um you need to make sure you know how to put it up you need to make sure everything is done correctly and you need to be able to do a walkthrough on it that's what we did here and i'm glad i did because with those tie outs there's things that i know I know them, like I know tie outs are going to, you know, guidelines are going to stretch a little when they're brand new. I know this, but I didn't think about it at all when setting that thing up. This morning I did go out and I believe I mentioned it in the video. They were a little loose. That's not an issue because you got those little adjusters, those little adjusting clips on there. Um, those little um guideline stays i love those stays but there was a, at least one guideline where i tied it so far down thinking it would be easier to not have it as far out from the tent if i tied it that way that i'd have to adjust it less with the adjuster 
And that mean when I got there this morning, that meant I couldn't tighten it back down. That was a user malfunction that was 100% on me. And I had to retie that guideline, which I did. And now it's retied. And I'm looking at it now. I don't even know what I was thinking yesterday because if I can bring one side of the cord that close to the tent, I can bring the other side just as close. That's literally how a single length of cord works. So that was dumb. That was a dumb on my side and it's corrected. But I do plan to leave the guidelines on there. Now the guideline that's on the door, I plan to take that off and retie it on that back section like I said earlier before I put the tent away. And I do plan to leave the guidelines on there when I put the tent away. Um, that's a personal thing for me. I just like to make sure that the guidelines are um, on the tent when I get there so that A, makes it easier to see which side is up because it's the one with all the strings on it, right? Um, B, once you've got your um, the base of your tent staked down from, at four points, you can throw your um, pole in there and just go through and stake everything down, guide it out quickly, and you're up and ready and in your shelter fast. Um, I think with those few little tweaks, honestly, I could have this tent up in 10 to 20 minutes um, pretty easily, not hurrying through it, just going around, tap, 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 tap. That's it. Um, also, the vest I usually wear, which I currently ain't got it on just because it's early, um, that vest, the pocket, I could easily see me dumping the stakes in there as I go around staking it out. Um, one thing I will add to this though, one thing I will add, those stakes. So I started using a rubber mallet, this rubber mallet, it's a brand new rubber mallet. Those stakes chewed this rubber mallet up. They really did. Um, so if you get this tent, don't use a rubber mallet because those stakes will chew your rubber mallet up. Um, this is only about three to five stakes that chewed this up like this. Um, what I did after that is I came in and got the hatchet that I purchased that I still need to test out. And I used its flat. The flat of that hatchet, which is a really lightweight hatchet, I actually think it's lighter than this mallet, was perfect for driving those in with no issues at all. Um, so that hatch is going to be what I use to put the stakes in, period. The mallet, this will probably go into the wall tent just so I can keep it because the stakes on, um, in that will not eat this up. So, yeah, be aware of that. If you do decide you want a tent like this, those stakes will eat that rubber mallet up. Again, something else I'm glad I tested before I go. That means I can save some weight when I pack to go to a one-off on, one -on camping for just me. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you have enjoyed it. I know it's um not my normal content. I know it's a little um chaotic, and I do apologize for um not being able to take the pictures of each step as I set it up. Um, but we did get it set up. And if you want a video of me showing you actually how to walk through and set up a tent like this in detail, let let me know. Um, honestly, this video is getting long already, so it's probably a good thing we missed that. And if we want, we can do that in a separate video later. All right. Um, yeah, I would, I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave a link to this tent below and you all can check it out because honestly, right now I'm really liking it. And when I do take it out, I will give you a actual infield review as well. All right. So until next time, I'm Drake. This has been Working Dragon Mystic. Have some fun. Keep progressing. Keep working towards self-mastery and self-empowerment. Take care. Bye-bye.